Hi. Hello. How are you? I am fine. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Melissa Jacobs. This is Mayline Tonight. Tonight, it's our horse show. My first guest is Tiffany Airy, one of the Mayline's top millinery hat divas, extraordinaire, queen, anything else I should say? <laughs> I did not know how else you call those things, but thank you. <laughs> yes, of course. Thank you so much for joining me. First, let me ask, how is everybody in your life? Is everybody healthy? Yeah, everybody's doing okay. I've got a full house here. Um, my mother and my youngest brother are here, and um, our youngest son and his partner are here too. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been pretty busy, but we're all doing okay. Thanks. And welcome to Instagram Live. This is your first time, right? It is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except for our little test this Cross afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, again, this is Mainline Tonight. My name is Melissa Jacobs. I'm with Tiffany Airy, Millinery. I wanted to have a little bit of a horse show because, as we know, the horse shows, Devon Horse Show, Radnor Hunt, all the steeplechase events have been canceled because of the pandemic. And granted, this is not the biggest problem that the world is facing. However, horse shows and equestrian life are a big part of our life on the main line in New York and obviously in Kentucky and elsewhere in the world. So I wanted to just celebrate a little bit of that equestrian life, especially the hats. So Tiffany, let's start with some definitions of different kinds of hats. So we have saucer hats, fascinator hats. Give me a little hat 101. What are the different kinds of hats? Um, there, I, I don't tend to use the word fascinator a lot. I know it's a really popular term. It's, it's kind of become a catch-all for, for anything, I think, that doesn't, you know, sit down on your head. But I tend to use it for just about anything. Um, I sometimes will use headpiece, you know, if, if the hat doesn't feel right. Um, but yes, you, you started out um, saying, you know, there are hats that have big brims. There are saucer hats, which, you know, doesn't really have too much of a crown, but it's just something very wide. Um, and if we weren't so limited for space here, I would be able to pull something up to show you. Um, but I mean, there's the classic cloche. There are top hats. Um, there are pillbox hats. Um, there are cocktail hats, um, which are just sort of little tight things. I have one of my hat blocks with me. Um, you know, just to show you kind of what that would look like. This is actually what the what a cocktail hat would be shaped on. Um, but it's just a little shape like that. Um, gosh. So are there hats appropriate for just, I think when you go to an event, whether it's a horse show or whatever, some people don't know, are there certain types of hats that you're supposed to wear for certain events? I think, um, yeah, I mean, it depends on the formality of the occasion. So, um, you tend to be uh, have a little bit more formality when you're going to a race. You know, people are getting dressed up. Um, you, you know, they're going to be outside. A lot of people opt for the wider brim. And the reason that I mean, they, you know, kind of created those brims in the first place was to help keep the sun out of your eyes. So they have purpose besides being very, you know, fashionable as well. Um, but there are, are smaller hats that can be equally as, as dressy. It just depends on how you, um, you know, how you accessorize them or, you know, how you trim them out. Um, usually, so is there like a dress code with hats for, let's say, horse shows? Does it depend on the show you're going to? Is there one style for the Kentucky Derby and one style for Devon Horse Show? I would say that, that each kind of has their own flavor depending on what, what the lady is wearing. Most of the times, um, the Kentucky Derby has a very... Um, uh, sort of a culture or history of the, you know, the very large hat. And the reason for that was because it was thought that the larger the hat, the more luck you would have um, at the track. Oh. The races. So that's how that tradition of a very large hat started. And that's what's preferred down there. Um, for Devon, most of the times you don't see hats except for the Ladies' Day competition, which has, you know, really grown in the past I don't know, I want to say five years, and certainly since the time that I started doing it. Um, and I think it's really- And the time you started winning it. <laughs> yeah i sort of got lucky my first time out of the gate so to speak um but you know it really it really depends on the lady um you know you see very wide hats you see very tall hats um some are innate some are, are simpler and more tailored um the, that competition has really become all about the person and what that person is trying to express and what so what we're talking about is ladies hat day 
um, which is one of the days of the Devon Horse Show. And I actually am wearing this because this, you can't obviously can't see the whole thing, but this is what I wore last year. Um, okay. to, yeah, this was my dress. Um, and it's a day that all of the ladies, ladies, women, who, and sometimes girls, um, come in their vest with hats and there's a competition and it's really a time to get creative and celebrate the region and celebrate the creativity of people like you who, you know, you won, I think the first time you entered, right? You won the yeah. ladies hat show, right? Yeah. Yeah. There was um, a really fun theme that year. It was, um, the Mad Hatter theme. Um, so one for the, the best theme hat and that yeah. really inspired me on my journey for, um, hat making. That was, I think, more of a, a craft project is probably what you would call it. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, Clearly you did. So let me reintroduce you. You are, my name is Melissa Jacobs. This is Mainline Tonight. Tonight is our horse show. We're celebrating equestrian life in our region and throughout the country. My first guest is Tiffany Airy from Tiffany Airy Millinery. So we were talking about what hat is right for what situation. What about what hat is right for what woman's head? Because I will tell you the truth, this head is very large. And I often, like, it is literally large. And I often have to wear men's hats. Yeah. Because my head is so, the, the, this, you know, it's so big. So how does, how do you fit the right hat to the right shape of a woman's head? Yeah. So there's a lot of things that come into play. And it's not just about the size of the head or the shape of the head, but also about the proportions of the face as well as the proportions oh. of the body. So there are certain um, hat shapes that will look better on different types of faces. So you're, you've probably seen this before um, in the magazines. You know, what is the best um, haircut for your face shape? Or what are the best eyeglasses or sunglasses for your face shape? So there are several different face shapes. There are, uh, there's the oval face shape, there's the round, there's the heart, there's the square, there's a the rectangle, and there's an oblong. Um, there's also the, um, the tri the inverted triangle, which is sort of like a heart shaped face, but, um, with sort of sharper jawline. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, there's also a pear-shaped face, which is a little bit narrow at the top. It's more like a triangle-shaped face. Wait, um, what do I have? There are certain rules that apply. Um, you, you've got a, a well, like, if you pull your hair back, you kind of have to do this with your hair pulled back so you can see what the, what the hairline looks like. So if you take your bangs. Oh, God, it'll just be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's long. I have a really long yeah. face. Yeah, yeah. So, I was super you a little bit of a triangle shape because you've got this narrow yeah, and right. a very narrow chin. So for somebody yeah. um, with your type face, you don't want to go with too wide of a brim because what it does is makes the chin look even tinier and more, point, oh. more pointed. So um, a close shape, a um, little, you know, a smaller brim, nothing more than like a medium brim um, for, um, for a face shape like yours would be good. Oh, interesting. And what about your shape face? Since, you know, I it's just a, the two of us. Yeah. So I have um, a longer shape face. Um, so if you've got it, uh, a long shape face or an oval shape face, um, you will look best in wide brim hats. Um, generally, you don't want to have anything that's going to be wider than your shoulders. Um, if you're taller, you can pull off um, a, more of a wider brim because you just have the, the height and the stature to pull it off. Um, so if you're smaller, kind of, you know, go go for something smaller. But what you're trying to go for is to sort of create that, you know, that that oval, that perfect oval shape and sort of that, yeah. you know, that triangle. Um, yeah. yeah. Kind of so what about somebody like, I mean, like Kate Middleton and I mean, she wears a lot of, I think, the saucer hats. She so when you look at a lot of percher hats, she doesn't go too, too big. Yeah, she wore a little bit of a, a wide brim last year at Ascot, which is a really beautiful look on her. She's got an oval shaped face. Um, oval shaped faces are lucky they can wear any, any style and, and, and pull it off. Um, it's all about your features. Um, but they will look best in something with a wider brim. But um, she tends to wear a, a lot of those kind of like little perchers, like the little, you know, saucer styles that look really nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And what about Meghan Markle? Did you look at her style at all? I mean, she may not be wearing hats anymore, but when she yeah. was. <laughs> she, um, she really, she tends to like a, a very tailored style overall. And so she really went with like those very, very simple tailored styles when it, when it came to hats. Um, I noticed that she didn't go to anything too fancy of anything. Um, I There were certain, certain um, styles that she wore, shapes that she wore, and I recognize the designers 
Um, oh. And it seems like she took the trimming off. You know, she just went with a very basic. Oh. Just the basic shape itself. I think that might have been for Ascot last year, if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, let me reintroduce to you. Um, my name is Melissa Jacobs. This is Mainline Tonight. Tonight is our horse show. Coming up soon, we have Jill Applebaum from Melbourne Salary. Right now, we are talking to Tiffany Airy, who makes some of the best hats on the main line. Um, okay, let's talk about the process, your process of making hats. You're a member of the Millinery Guild, the Milliner's Guild, Millinery Guild. Mil yeah. um, and so it is a craft. So let's talk about your creative process. Where do you start? Where do you get your inspiration from? What kinds of materials do you use? Walk me through it. Sure. Um, I would say inspiration comes from a lot of places. Um, it's a very, I would say, organic process for me. A lot of the times um, I may be in the midst of creating um, somebody's hat, and I'm usually creating multiple hats at, at one time, and so there's lots of stuff spread out. And um, sometimes I create by accident. You know, there just may be like a fabric that I'm using on one hat and, you know, trimming in another, and I'm always, oh, those look nice, or... I like that color combination. It's sort of unexpected, but they look good together. So a lot of times I'll just take stuff out and I'll start playing um, and see what I come up with. Um, other times um, there might be something a little bit more deliberate. I might see a, a shape in nature or you know, something architectural that I wanna, you know, that I use as an inspiration point and then start looking at, at materials, you know, that'll get me there. But the process that I follow um, is a very um, traditional process that has been used um, for a long time. Um, I make hats on um, hat blocks. I showed you a, a little one before. I think this is going to be hard, but this is just like a basic crown, wow. you know, just for, um, you know, sort of a rounded crown. Um, they're, they're solid wood and the material um, that is used to create it could be um, something like for summertime, it could be cinnamon straw. And I've got just a few off cuts here of a cinnamon fabric, which I'm sure you've seen hats being made. Yeah. From. Um, it's flat. So this gets, um, it gets dampened, it gets steamed, and then through the process of stretching and a whole lot of uh, arm work and shoulder work and pinning, it, it gets pulled out until it, it forms onto the, the shape of this. Oh, interesting. Um, and then wow. it then has to dry um, and some stiffener applied to it and um, excess trimmed off. And then that shape then gets wired um and then it has to have a brim attached to it which is made in a separate process but that's that's basically um what happens and then um then it get you know it gets trimmed and inside ribbon is is put on it so it's very um it's very you know hands-on it's i i do all hand sewing i've got a sewing machine but there's not much that can be done with the sewing machine when it comes to hats i mean it's couture so right it's, it's more hats. Hats process yeah yeah they're one of a kind hats um, and people can find out, they should follow you on Instagram and they can find all about it um, on your website. You not only have um, hats there, but you also rent them, I saw yeah. on your website. Yeah. I did not know that. I'm going to be taking advantage of that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So you rent them really for like $40 a day, some of them, right? Some of the, yeah, some of the smaller pieces can be um, rented for, um, I've got one that's probably like for $35, you know, if you want to want to rent it for a weekend. Um, it depends um, on the, the retail price, so that the rental price is a function of the, the actual retail price of the hat. But it's worked out really well for people who aren't quite sure what they want or they don't have the space to, you know, store hats. Um, and so far, people have been pretty good about it. I was a little bit cautious because... Not many people do. Yeah, what if they get damaged? Also. Yeah, yeah. So there is, um, I do take a deposit for them and, you know, everybody's information and everything. And there is a, you know, contract that has to be signed, you know, uh, oh, I see. damages. But so far, people have been really respectful and really very careful. And it's worked out. It's worked out nicely. Yeah, it's great. Okay, so Tiffany Airy, Tiffany Airy Milner, tell me how you got started in this. It is, I know that you have a corporate job, right? Um, or you did, and this is such a craft, and it's such an old craft. So tell me how you got started doing this. You're mostly self-taught, correct? Correct. So um, it's funny that um, you know we're talking about the Devon Horse Show tonight because I really credit the Devon Horse Show with with the reason for um, how I got into millinery. I had always loved fashion and I loved design. I had an interior decorating business many years ago, so I'd always been drawn to that sort of thing. Um, but I'd never made hats. I had done some sewing, garment sewing, 
but um, never did anything in terms of the hat, though I love to wear them. And I we used to read up on the Ladies' Day recap after after Devin, and I thought to myself, well, that sounds like fun. I think maybe next year I'll take the day off, and then I'll just you know give it a whirl. And so I looked for the information that came out that year. As I told you, it was the the Mad Hatter theme, and I created mm -hmm. something and went and ended up winning. But that got me sort of interested in, in, you know, how do I make these for real? So I did start studying on my own. I read everything I could get my hands on. I took out videos, I got tutoring, um, and just started trying to uh, do things just for myself. My intention had never been to start a millinery business. I made things for myself and people started noticing and then they started asking me to make them. Um, and I was doing it just to cost initially as a hobby. But then as it, the demand grew, I felt like I needed to do something with a little bit more structure to it um, and a little bit more serious. So um, set up the an LLC, uh, got my website going, you know, made sure I was on, you know, on social media, um, but have kept my uh, my full time job all this time. <laughs> Make hats nights and weekends and don't have much of a life. Well, it's amazing. Um, and of course, you've been in mainline today many times um, and in the hunt. And so you're one of our favorites. You're one of my favorites. Thank you so much, Tiffany Airy Millinery. People should follow you on Instagram. Go buy her hats, rent her hats, get yourself in her hats, however you can afford to do that. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure speaking.